Yes, it's so exciting to get my first chips back and actually see some life out of them. Here you can see one of my super simple designs actually working in silicon. Full disclosure, due to the issues in MPW1, I'm unable to enable all segments at once. So I made this video by compositing with two different sets of IOs. This is such a milestone for me, seeing my designs working on my first chip, and I thought it would be a good opportunity to make a quick recap of the whole process. Let's start off by looking at how we build digital logic on silicon. The LEDs are driven by digital switches, and digital switches are the core of how this ASIC works. If we have a semiconductor with the correct doping, then it can act like a switch. With a small electric field, we can turn it on and off. If we put two of these switches together, then we can build one of the simplest building blocks, an inverter. If we put a zero in, we get a one out, and if we put a one in, we get a zero out. We can make a whole load of these little building blocks called standard cells and put them together into the PDK or Process Design Kit. The PDK I'm using is the world's first open source manufacturable PDK from Skywater Foundry in the US. And that's part of what makes even this simple seven segment counter exciting. In the old days, we'd have to take these little blocks and draw them out by hand. But now we can use a hardware description language like Verilog so we can use some code to describe the hardware we want. This is the code we need to convert a decimal number into the correct outputs to show the number on the display. Here we add some flip-flops to be able to store how many clock cycles are passed. I did a video recently on how flip-flops work if you want to check that out. We can then take this design and put it into an open source ASIC flow. I've been using one called OpenLane, but there's others like Silicon Compiler and Coriolis. The tools all do essentially the same thing. They convert the Verilog design description into a netlist mapped to the standard cells that we have available in the library. Then the cells get placed into a floor plan, connected up, powered and clocked. The resulting file is called a GDS file. It's a bit similar to Gerber files if you've done some PCB design before, except the GDS for Sky 130 has about 40 layers, and this design is only 100 micrometers by 100 micrometers in size. Because my designs are so small, I decided to put a lot together into my first chip. The outside ring, called the pad ring, is where the IOs are, and this part at the bottom contains a RISC-V CPU and some memory. That's there in case we want a coprocessor, and it's also the part that sets up the I.O. as inputs or outputs. We sent the designs to eFabulous last year, and about one year later we have the first silicon back. In the future, we expect this delay to reduce to about six months, or even less, as the bugs get ironed out of the process. Because of the hold violations in NPW1, I didn't think I'd be able to get any signs of life at all. But Sylvain Monod worked out a really cool bring-up methodology that's allowed us to get about 90% of the IOs working on about 40% of the chips. He's working on a new video describing that, so check out his channel to learn more. The package is pretty small. It's a 5x3mm BGA with 0.5mm pitch and 60 pins. But it wasn't too hard to solder with hot air and flux. Out of 10, I got signs of life from 5 and 3 were able to run some firmware. With this firmware, I can set the IOs to be outputs. Something's not quite right with the IO configuration shift registers, so either I've got IO 13 or 14, but not both. So that's why I overlaid the two videos earlier. If you want to learn more about the problems we had with MPW1, you can check the video linked above. So if you want to learn how to design your own chips and even get them made, then sign up to the Zero to ASIC course. If you're not quite ready, then why not join the mailing list to keep up to date with the world of open source silicon and get discount vouchers for the course.